Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's wonderful to get to welcome you into worship on this lovely summer's morning. Um, we were just reflecting earlier that we kind of went from boy, it's cold to boy, it's warm with not much in between. So we all get to adjust to that a bit. Today, our service, um, we're celebrating Holy Trinity. It's also slightly different in that our first lesson um, is the creation story. It's quite long, and so we're doing it a little differently today. It's more of a responsive reading. So we'll all take part in recounting the story of creation. I invite you to prepare your hearts and your minds as we share in this time of worship. We hear God's word, we sing God's praises, and we also receive from his holy supper today. We begin our worship this morning with the very beginning, with the story of creation. And at the beginning of time, God the creator, God the powerful word, and God the life-giving spirit form the earth and all its inhabitants. God sees all this is created work is good and then rests on the seventh day. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters and then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds, and fruit trees of every kind on earth, that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, <clears throat> and, fruit, <clears throat> excuse me, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let there be, let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. We sing, Morning Has Broken.
We continue with our creation story. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth. Everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he made. And indeed, it was very good, all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth. our prayer of the day. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We 
we continue with our psalm for today, which is psalm number eight. Again, my confirmation verse is within this one, psalm eight, verse nine. So I always celebrate a little when we get to do this one. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens, out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and the measure. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor, you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of their hands. You have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our second reading comes from 2 Corinthians in the 13th chapter. Paul closes a challenging letter to the Corinthians with an appeal to Christian fellowship, grounded in the triune harmony of, God, of Christ's grace, God's love, and the Spirit's partnership. Beginning in verse 11. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet in one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Here ends our second lesson. I invite you to stand, and we will read our gospel verse today. <clears throat> Alleluia. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. God's glory fills the whole earth. Alleluia. So our gospel lesson comes from St. Matthew in the 28th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. After his resurrection, Jesus summons his remaining disciples and commissions them to baptize and teach all nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beginning with verse 16. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and redeemer. Amen. When I was a young girl, <clears throat> we lived in a house in the woods. And one of our favorite things to do as children, of course, was to um, explore the woods, explore the whole area, discover all the little treasures and all the wonderful places that the woods can contain. But our favorite place to go was just on the outside edge of the woods, off of our land, onto the um, farmer neighbor's land. And there was a small hill. There was our woods and then a small hill, and that led down into the fields. And this hill was covered in sumac. And so at different times of the year, it was just simply glorious. It was a beautiful place to be. And one of the fun parts about it too, one of the little treasures we would find, is that quite often the deer would bed down in the long grasses amongst the sumac. And so my one brother and I would explore through there and we'd find the places, little beds, where the deer had bed down. 
and we would make up stories and have a whole world in this little nest in the sumac with our dog duchess just breaking through and we would pretend that she was an elephant and the sumac were giant trees and it was a marvelous place to grow up. But another reason why this place is, uh, is precious to me um, as a memory is it was also the place when I really had my first um, experience, my first theophany, my first real experience of God's presence. It was summertime, it was warm, we were in one of those lovely spots where we knew the deer had been. Our dog is frolicking, running around us. My brother and I are actually getting along and at peace with each other, which is pretty rare. And I just all of a sudden had this sudden, complete sense of God fully present, God fully surrounding me, that we were completely enveloped and held by God, and that this beautiful beautiful, amazing world and the sense of peace within me was all his gift. And in that moment, I just had this complete sense of God with me. And it's always stuck with me. I may have been eight or nine, but it has always stuck with me because that was the place where I fully experienced it. And when the local <clears throat> golf course bought the farmer's land, and developed it. I was very worried, but the Sumac Hill remains. They haven't messed with that. I was relieved. But as I've spoken to people over the years and talked about one of those times when you've had that sense of God fully present with you, when have you had those kinds of moments? Usually, you know, quite often, they will tell me about a time when they have been in nature, when they have been in creation. Um, when I was out on the boat and the lake, fishing, and it was so peaceful, and it was so beautiful, and I just had this sense, God was with me. Or a friend of mine, <clears throat> the first time I went to the mountains, and we were out hiking, and just the view, and the, and the breeze, and the wonder of creation surround me, and I knew that God was there. It is no wonder that that is true, because of course it is in our amazing creation in which we really experience the wonder and awe of God. This morning, we got to go through the creation story, talking about each step and about how God saw that it was good and how God spoke this world into being, including us. And I think one of the wonderful gifts of faith and wonderful gifts of the scripture we have is that we have this marvelous sort of vision for how it all came together, how it all came to be slowly over time, becoming this beautiful world in which we inhabit it, this beautiful world where God is so very, very present. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm over bronchitis, but it hasn't let go of my throat yet, so please forgive me. <clears throat> we are told in the creation story that we have been given this world to be mindful of, to have dominion over, to be stewards of, to be watched over. So not only are we given the gift of life and breath, but we're also given the charge and the gift of being stewards of all that surrounds us, right? The natural world and the people in it, we are called to be stewards of that. Now that sounds pretty daunting. I mean, I'm not a great steward of my flowers that I plant every year. It's a wonder that they survive me. Um, so, you know, stewardship in that sense is not the best thing when it's in my name. I don't have a black thumb, but I don't have a green one either. So I don't know, God, about leaving these things to me. But nonetheless, we are called upon to have concern and care for the created world and for the people that inhabit it. And that this is part of who we are. This is a part of how we function, a part of our purpose in being here. <clears throat> this gift and this calling is a beautiful one and it's also a daunting one. In our gospel lesson, um, we get that little snippet of Jesus sending out the disciples 
to share the good word of Jesus Christ and to baptize people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. We are also stewards of one another in that we are meant to share the gospel that we have been given. We are meant to make sure that people know the hope that we have been given. So, okay, guys, how do we do this? How do we be good stewards of this beautiful created world? And how do we be stewards of each other, making sure that the people around us know of Jesus Christ and know that there is love and care for them and who they are? How in the world, my good people, do we do that? That is the lifelong calling of each Christian, and that has been the question that each person has dealt with and faced um, in life from the very beginning. We are, this is not a new calling, of course. This is the one that we've had ever since the beginning. How do we care for our creation? For some reason, and the care of creation can be a controversial subject. I was talking to a friend of mine saying, yeah, I'm going to talk about care of creation. And they said, oh, you better be careful. Don't you be getting in some of that stuff. I'm like, why? Why is it controversial that we have a care for this beautiful world that we have, that it continues to thrive, that it continues to be healthy, that we recognize the ways in which we and others and other factors are harming it, and how do we encourage and how do we make sure that this is um, alive and growing and healthy and good for all of creation? Why is that? At some point, I want somebody to explain that to me without getting grumpy about it. But that is a part of who we are. That is a part of the calling that we have. That it matters very deeply to us that it's not safe to drink the water in many places. I was reading the report about the places where it was safe to um, swim in the water. And it was basically saying the entire southern half of Minnesota, you really probably shouldn't be swimming in the lakes. Well, that's a problem. That's not okay, right? So we, we care about these things. We care deeply about these things. And together we seek to find answers to those questions. And yes, we're going to disagree. And yes, we're going to get grumpy and difficult. But that doesn't mean that we give up on the fact that the health and the well-being of this world around us is part of the very first job that we were ever given. God filled us with breath. We were alive, and God said, get out there. <laughs> Take care of things for me. Okay, all right, here we go. It doesn't have to be Earth Day for us to be concerned, right? It doesn't have to be a special set-aside day. But that <laughs> every day is part of that concern. <clears throat> Excuse me. I find it really concerning that the folks in Flint, Michigan, their, their water still isn't safe to drink. How many years has it been since we figured out that it was lethal? That's a great concern to me. When we were during COVID and everything was shut down, I don't know if you looked at some of those pictures too of how these cities that used to be just covered in smog, how it was beautiful and clear and blue and how wildlife would start to come on out and explore. It was beautiful, wasn't it? It was amazing. And then our shutdown was over, and do you know how long it took for things to go back to the way they were? Not long at all, was it? Now, none of us want to do a shutdown again. But we know, we recognize what we do to the world around us. We recognize that we have an impact on this world. And it is for us to examine deeply the imprint that we make and the ways that we might be a positive steward to this world instead of simply a user of it. We have finite resources. And what are we going to do? And then, of course, that question of how is it that we are good stewards to the people around us? 
I don't know about you, but I just don't like everybody. Sorry. I wish my heart was so big that everybody was just super cool with me. But there are certain people in this world that just really tick me off, make me uncomfortable, annoy me to no end, right? But nonetheless, nonetheless, God says, guess what? We have care and concern for each other. We are meant to be good stewards of what we've been given and make sure that the people around us know of God's love and know of our care. All righty, I'll get right on that, Jesus. But nonetheless, here we are. Here we are called out to be these good stewards. Here we are asking the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit each and every day to help us to find the words and the actions that allow us to transcend past our selfishness, past our tribalism, past our desire to not have to deal, (laughs) and help us be his presence on the earth. So on this Holy Trinity Sunday where we celebrate that God is present to us as creator, as savior, as sustainer, as we celebrate that God does all that God can, has created this world, has created us, we are invited to examine, well, what does that mean then for us as we live out our lives? What does it mean that we have a creator, a redeemer, and sustainer? What does that mean as we step out into this world And it means that we care deeply about what God has created and we care deeply about whether people know their savior and we care deeply that we are part of the work that the Holy Spirit does in this world. So I invite us all to recommit ourselves to that very first job that we were given, that very first calling that we received from the very, very beginning, that of being good stewards of all that God has created and that together, together, we might be a loving presence of God in this world. Amen. We're going to sing, Word of God, Come Down on Earth. Confess using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I ask you to stand as you are comfortable as we make this confession. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived. 
by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. Holy Three, Holy One, you call the church to make disciples of all nations. Encourage bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay ministers in their proclamation of the gospel. And direct all the baptized into lives of humble service. God, in your mercy. Hear Holy Three, Holy One, you spoke creation into being and called it good. Protect lands and waters threatened by human misuse. And sustain living creatures of every kind while animals, birds, fish, and every creeping thing. God, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Three, Holy One, you have given humankind authority over the earth. Raise up leaders who listen earnestly, speak honestly, and govern, govern thoughtfully. Heal divisions between nations that we might agree with one another and live in peace. God, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Three, Holy One, you promise to be with us always to the end of the age. Surround those most in need of your healing presence, any who are lonely, all who are grieving, and those who are sick. We lift you especially Arlen and Janice, Bay and Darla, Randy, Karen and Alan, Gary, Jack and Megan, Sharon, Helen and Lorelai, Ricky, Don and Judy, for Roger, Linda and Cheryl, Ricky and Mary and Brad, and Misty and Marcy, Algernon, Harlan, Brianna, Thea, Elisa. We pray for all those who are grieving, especially the family and friends of Melanie Arnold and <clears throat> Helene Zoic. Zoic. <clears throat> and also, Lord, we give you thanks that you have welcomed a new child into your kingdom. For We pray your <clears throat> care be over Rory K. Vosford. God, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Three, Holy One, you set the earth on its axis and we experience the seasons. Strengthen those enduring challenges this summer, those who suffer in the heat, parents overwhelmed by childcare responsibilities, and children experiencing food insecurity outside of school. God, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Three, Holy One, you give rest when our work is done. We give thanks for all the saints who now rest in you confident in the promise of resurrection life in the age to come. God, in your <coughs> mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace.
Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord has set the table and invites you to come receive these signs of his love and mercy.
Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world, through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. All right, for announcements. This is the first time in 23 years that we've almost run out of wafers. <laughs> I like that problem, guys. Keep it coming. All right, for announcements, um, we have our usual schedule this week of Bible study Wednesday morning, which we live stream, and then again at one on uh, Country View. Um, on Thursday, we do our communion service over at Country View at 8.30. Yes. It's at 10. Got switched. Okay, good to know. We need to talk to the person in the know. 10 o'clock on Thursday. And then both um, our Saviors in English will have circle. Um, coming this Friday is our Synod Assembly, Friday and Saturday, our Synod Assembly at Gustavus. Uh, so be in prayers for the work of our whole Synod. 
And then on Saturday is that baby shower. And the next Sunday we'll have worship um, with the saints. We call it Service with the Saints um, at St. Olaf Cemetery at 9 and also at the Trinity Cemetery at 9. It's been a tradition with St. Olaf for quite a few years now that we have a Sunday in which we worship Holy Communion with our saints. And, um, and Trinity has said, sure, we'll give it a whirl. And so please come on out to either cemetery for that worship service. And of course, if we have rain, nasty weather, we'll just be back in the building. But um, for those who've experienced it, it can be very meaningful. Also a reminder that our mission of the month has changed, of course, now that we're in June. Now it's for Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit uh, ministry that um, is meant to encourage <clears throat> rural ministry and understanding of all the special needs of this area. Um, us, us pastors often have our tech study there. And one of the great things that we get to experience as pastors is every year they bring seminarians um, out who haven't really experienced rural life before. And they come talk to us about being pastors in rural areas. And we give a really strong plug for it. Um, so I encourage you to continue to support that ministry. And then also, our, um, you know, our synod is broken into conferences. And we're in Scenic Valley Conference. And one of the things that uh, we've noticed is that you know, ever since COVID, of course, we've become more separated. We, we don't spend as much time together. We're more used to being kind of our own little units in our own little homes. And we're only really wanting to have a desire to bring us together as God's people and get to know each other one again, once again. And so all members of the 19 congregations of the Scenic Valley Conference are invited to gather for a potluck picnic on Sunday evening, June 25th at 5 p.m. at the Zeb Gray Shelter at Ramsey Park in Redwood Falls. Bring a dish to pass. <clears throat> Hot dogs, buns, plates, all that stuff will be provided. So if you're interested in attending this, just please let Pastor Chuck or I know. We just want to give them a general sense of numbers. You have a little time to think about it. But it's just, I think it's a really awesome um, thing that this desire to get us together and connect us once again, because we've become kind of so separated in these past couple of years. So we'll make sure to put this up, and we'll have it in our announcements. But please consider coming to this um, Scenic Valley Conference uh, potluck picnic on June 25th. And Ramsey Park is beautiful. So is there anything else that we should be announcing today? There's coffee after church. Yes, there's coffee. Back there. And the treats back there. And please do come so I don't get in trouble. Because there's always lots of food and lots of coffee, so come help us out. And plus, it's just so wonderful to have all of us together from these different congregations, and it's great to have some time um, to be in conversation. And also for our <clears throat> Trinity folks, our council members from Trinity, remember that we are meeting after worship over in the library. All right. Just a reminder to bring yes. the lawn chairs for the next Sunday. Yes, bring the lawn chairs for the service with the saints. You bet. Unless you like sitting on the grass, which is a possibility too. All right. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks to the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now until the end of the age. Amen. And of course, we can't have a Holy Trinity Sunday without singing Holy, Holy, Holy.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. We will. Thanks be to God.